Okay, welcome back to our channel. This is going to be our post-race 70.3 World Championship St. George recap video. inches of snow? We do 12 to 16 of them. So at least 12 inches of snow up here in Cedar Highlands. So the neighbours have kindly said that we can use their treadmill and gym in their garage. So we have walked around here and I'm going to do a bit of a run. Just come running by. Shorts, isn't it? You can't really do that no. on the bike now because the seam in the middle look like they'll do a good job for keeping you warm. Try well, it. May maybe I think you might get a bit of chafe because well, you then you haven't got stuff on. you haven't got the padding directly where you want it. We still got the padding. You've got it underneath. It's so like when we were choppers and started cycling with underwear on. Yeah, but I think I think it will still be all right as long as you've got loads of chamois on. Maybe. It's going to be uh, who can come up. It's going to be like innovation. Yeah, who can come I up with the smartest way of. Also, if you have them, you can tuck the bin bag into it so it stays nice and secure to your body. Pro bin bag.
all of this so I can do a run. <laughs> On a treadmill indoors. <laughs> so obviously this is by far the coldest conditions that I've ever raced in. We were kind of looking at the long-term forecast about 10 days out from the race and we started to realize it was gonna be a really cold race. I definitely think actually being up in Cedar City, up the mountain, having that bit of snow exposure, a bit of cold weather, probably helped me mentally a little bit, but obviously it's no way near enough time for the body to actually acclimatize to the cold weather. You need almost at least two weeks to kind of maximize that adaptation. So we knew we was never gonna get a full adaptation, but obviously playing around in the snow a little bit probably helped me mentally to be like, okay, I can deal with the cold, I can deal with being cold, I've got this. So it probably helped me a little bit. Perfect weather attire. Well, saw me to christen the wetsuit. <laughs> <laughs> when you can't get to the pool. I don't want to waste the minute. Of. Don't have any plans, bring it. If you could, I could spill it. Because I need it now. Money is a bitch in it. I don't wanna think about it. So if you know the song, sing it. Cause I need it now. Take me to a place where the music's loud. I don't wanna play right now. <laughs> Flashing lights running through the crowd. I don't ever wanna stop. So let's get out. Let's get out. I got money in my pocket. Perfect for snow, just yeah. put the wetsuit on. Perfect. And I'm stretching it in before the race, getting it ready for race day. Hopefully there's a swimmer. <laughs> Yeah, so there were a few fashionable strategies that I did on race day. The first one being having a bin bag or a trash bag under my race suit. So I actually did the entire race with the bin bag there, started with it underneath on the swim, wore it for the bite and then just kept it on for the run because it actually wasn't that hot on the run either. The second thing that I did was I had a Roka thermal swim cap, which I obviously wore on the swim. And then I just opted to leave that on and wear it under my helmet for the bike, which again, kept my head quite nice and warm. So I feel like that was a really good idea as well. Did you run out of clothes? This is, this is my solution for cold race day. Because it's a wind block. But you put something over it. Might be a little bit restrictive. It goes under the tricep? Yeah. But not like that. Well, this it, in itself is a great tricep. engineered tricep. You wouldn't even notice. Might get a bit of chafing. I don't want it around my neck. There you go. Could you tell I've got a bin bag on? Oh, I can see a little bit rustle. up there. Where? Up there. Oh. I think it's a great idea. Just Comment not, below what you think. Just, just not like that. <laughs> Seriously, put this on and then put your tricep on. Just sit. Not like that. I'm not doing it like that because it will restrict my shoulders far too much. In this what are you ripping? It's not restrictive. Nothing wrong with that. No one will ever know. I don't care if they know, I care if I can't move. But then you'll never get it off. I don't think, I'm never, I have to get that over my head. Yeah, but at least you off. can get that off. No, I can't, because my tri is oh. Like that. Oh my god. <laughs> That's what Lucy's going to do at the finish line. On the finish line. <laughs> Terrible waste of plastic there. Mm. No, I'm not doing it like that. Well, just because I've done it like that and it's a good idea. No, I think it's not how I want to do it because it will be too long. It still will be too long. It's like a threshold of about a year of me having a good idea before Lucy finally embraces the idea. Well, this it's is a year been, of stubbornness. This has been 12 hours and I didn't say it's a bad idea straight away. But you're not doing it because 
I don't want to wear it over my head. What are you I feel doing like with a it, suffocated anyway? child. It's a bit dark. It's Halloween, isn't it? Oh, look. <gasps> oh, that. So lovely tall. <laughs> Perfect. Fashion. Fashion. When we got to Cedar City from Kona, I had a few days where I felt really tired, which is obviously normal after the Ironman, traveling, jet lag. And then I started to feel quite good up until a week out from the race where I felt really good. Like I nailed a good bike session, a good run session and had a really great swim session. In fact, I had a string of really good swim sessions. So I was like, you know what? I feel so ready, like I'm gonna have a great race. And then we went down from altitude down to St. George about two days before the race. I did a swim on the Wednesday and I couldn't hit anywhere near the pace that I was hitting up at altitude down at St George, which is obviously a much lower altitude at around a thousand meters, maybe even less than that. And that was when I was slightly concerned because I was like, this should be so easy. Like I should be flying down here. There's so much more oxygen. And I just didn't get that lift. So at that point I was like, oh, maybe I'm gonna be a bit flat on race day. But at the same time, I didn't really let it impact my mental confidence because I've had races before where I feel absolutely terrible before the race and then have a great race. I would say I rarely have a race where I feel terrible. I've never really had that day where I feel awful. So I wasn't too worried about it. But definitely looking back now, I would say that if the race had been a week earlier, I probably would have performed better just looking at how my training was going and how I felt in those sessions. Generally, just a little bit flat, didn't have that extra gear and just felt a bit tired. So you would think an extra week of recovery from the Ironman, you would feel better, but I actually felt a little bit worse. We're going to start with the head hole in the middle, so I've folded the bin bag in half. Somewhere over here. I don't know how big my head is, so... Start with a uh, small cut. <laughs> well, it's definitely a big enough head hole. I don't want to have limiting arm movement. Additional layers where it's kind of folded on itself have yeah. probably made it even warmer than if it was thinner. Yeah. Hoodie. <laughs> Hoodie. <laughs> That's so Balenciaga. <laughs> cape. I have a cape. <laughs> 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 It works. I think it doesn't really need to be that neat because it's all fitted inside the yeah. 
suit anyway. And it's not that restrictive? No, it's not. Just you wrestling as you... I just don't wrestling. <laughs> Is that nice? Someone's behind me. <laughs> good afternoon, good morning, welcome! Lucy Charles Barkley! Are you enjoying being uh, in St George again? Yeah, there's definitely a good feeling down here. We've just gone and got a nice coffee, uh, met some people, everyone's in good spirits. So I think everyone's really excited for the race now. I see you've used your Roka wetsuit to very, very good effect, but not at the reservoir, but rather in the snow recently. Yeah, I felt like I've acclimatised quite well to the colder weather. We've obviously been up the mountain and we did have a big snowstorm and I had a brand new wetsuit that needed breaking in and we couldn't actually get down the mountain. So kind of playing around in the snow in the wetsuit was my best option. So on race morning, obviously, you're up super early. We was up at like half past three in the morning, getting one of the first school bus shuttle buses over to Sand Hollow for the swim. Look at nice and cold rush. <laughs> setting up transition, just going through everything. I definitely did feel quite relaxed. I mean, you're always a bit nervous. It's such a big race. It's a world championship. I'm the defending champion. It's a big deal. But at the same time, I feel like I'm getting to a place in this sport where I've done this enough times now. I know what to do. I know my strategy. I know my nutrition. I, I know mainly how I'm going to execute my day. And I have no control over what anyone else is going to do. So I definitely take a lot of comfort from that. At the same time, it's a massive race again it's a race that I didn't think I would be at so I knew once I finished that race it was almost just like closing the chapter on what has been a really difficult year overcoming the injury the journey to getting back to racing so I felt in a really good place this is just gonna round out four great races that I've had that I just didn't expect to have so I'm never gonna take away that feeling of being on a start line and being happy and being healthy. I think it's so overlooked and it's probably something that before I may have taken for granted, but now I just won't. If I'm in any race, in good shape, healthy, injury free, then I'm just going to be really happy to be there. There you go. Keep my ears warm. So I would say one of the mistakes I definitely made on race day was wearing the darker Roka goggles. I should have opted for one of their clearer lenses because I just hadn't anticipated how dark it was going to be on race morning. And I'm actually really glad I got in for a swim warm up because when I got in on the swim warm up, I thought I was following the lead out boys, but I was actually swimming on the ones on the way back. And it wasn't until someone in a kayak was like, no, they're your return boys. And I was like, thank God I've got in here and I now know that because I know I'm aiming for the ones on the left but even like 15 minutes after that when our race actually started it was still incredibly dark and actually I couldn't go out at my usual go out speed because I had to keep checking I was going the right way and we had a lead kayaker but I still couldn't even see him it was so dark so it wasn't actually until we made the turn to come back towards the swim exit that I could actually see where we were going because the light was behind us and lighting up all the boys so 
yeah, a bit of a tactical error there, definitely on my part. And I think from now on, every race I go to, I will pack the mirror goggles and the clear goggles so that depending on what the conditions are like, I will have the right equipment for race day. So the swim itself was actually completely fine temperature wise. The water just felt like a normal swim. It felt quite nice because the air temperature was so cold. Even like running out of the water to my bike, because I was still in my wetsuit, I actually felt quite warm. It wasn't until kind of getting changed in transition where you still felt quite warm and you're putting the layers on thinking right I need that, I need the arm warmers, need the gloves. It wasn't until we got on that bike and you started to feel the wind chill and you're moving fast through the air that it was freezing and it actually was bad because at the beginning part of the bike when there was fast sections you almost didn't even want to go that fast because the faster you went the colder you felt from the wind so that was really difficult to get my head around like no I need to go as fast as possible obviously I'm in a race but I'm going to feel colder for that so that was really difficult to kind of manage the emotions of I am absolutely freezing but I need to go as fast as possible. I need to take my nutrition. I need to do everything that you'd normally do. So again, a learning curve racing in those conditions and now a good confidence boost knowing I can race in cold conditions. It kind of broadens my horizon of racing because normally I would pick the hot races where I know, yeah, I like the warmth, I can deal with the heat. So a definitely good learning experience. Yeah, so Taylor obviously came past quite early on the bike. It was still super cold at that point. I think Flora actually came past as well. So I was sitting third wheel back and I knew that I would have to do a really big effort to go back past Flora and actually start to try and close on Taylor who was going up the road past Flora. So tactically at that point, I knew I didn't have the legs to go with Taylor. So I was like, if I go with her, that might end my day. So I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna stay here with Flora. I know she's such a strong rider. We can still have a good ride together. And at that point, you don't know how far up the road Taylor's gonna get. Maybe she'll blow up on the run. It's still a half marathon at the end of the day. So it's kind of just saying, you know what, she's doing her thing today. This is mine. This is all that I can do. I've got to be tactical here and make sure that I don't burn too many matches early on. It was definitely also hard because last year I probably had the best race of my life. I felt amazing all day led from the swim and never looked back, never saw anyone, just had that day where your legs just feel amazing. So that was hard this year because I just didn't feel like that. I definitely felt quite flat, just didn't have that extra gear. But you know what? I still am very happy of how my mind felt in that moment. I was still keeping positive, doing my thing, just basically racing how I like to race, which is going as hard as I can. You know what, actually the whole race was quite enjoyable for me, having other people around me. It made the race go so much quicker. So even on the bike, I'm not used to being in a group. So it's like managing that distance to the wheel in front. I always try and keep 20 meters no matter what, just so the referee can't ever say or think that I'm anywhere near drafting. So that kind of focus of keeping the gaps, all of that made the bike go so much quicker. And then kind of moving on to the run, again, it's not often that I'm running with other girls. I've had a small experience of that from my small amount of short course racing that I did where you're running in a group of girls all together. But over this distance, it's the first time that I've been running with other athletes. So to be running with Paula Finley and Flora Duffy was actually so much fun for most of that first lap. Yeah, I just really enjoyed it. I feel like it's feels way more tactical when you're actually in a group dynamic and you're trying to get the best position on the run, maybe being sheltered for the wind or pushing the downhill because you feel good or pushing the uphill because you feel strong in that area. So yeah, a definitely a different dynamic to racing again that I'm used to, but I did enjoy it quite a lot. So at the end of the run or towards the end of the run, I could see I was gaining back time on Flora who had pulled away at the earlier part of the run. and. I was like, I feel like I can get her. I feel like I can find something, push on, get her and get into that third place position. On the second lap, I think you're around 15 kilometers when you leave the golf course. And it was just after that on the straight section that I passed Flora and I put a dig in and I was like, right, I'm back on the podium, I'm in third. And I remember seeing Reese on the side and he was like, you have got to push because Emma's coming and I was like, 
I know she's behind me and she's closing. It's like 4K left at this point, like surely I can hold her off. I'm finding another gear and surely she's gonna be struggling to find another gear because it's so late in the run. And then with a mile to go, I looked behind me and Emma was right there and I was just like, oh my God, like I just knew. I couldn't do anything. When she came past, I was gonna do everything I could to go with her, but there was just nothing left. Like I'd put in such a dig to actually get past Flora and drop Flora, that there was no more gears left. There was nothing in the tank to push on that final bit. So that was so tough because I came so close to getting on the podium. But at the same time, I have so much respect for Emma. I've raced her a lot of times before. We've had some great battles. So on the flip side, I was like really happy for her to get on the podium, but it was bittersweet to not get on the podium this time. But oh, yeah, it was a great race. I think it's so exciting to see women's racing at the moment. The level is just rising all the time. And these little battles that are going on within the main race, it's just, great for our sport so yeah i am excited for the future i'm excited to have a healthy season a full season of work where i can go into these races and be at 100 percent capacity with a big base under me some more racing experience in the year yeah so excited for what next year has to bring Fashion here, high fashion. Yeah, I have to be pretty happy to be sat here and it was a fight all day. Um, so gutted to just miss out on the podium, but fair play to Emma, she was running so strong out there. And yeah, to come away with fourth, I definitely can't complain with that. When I was diagnosed with the hip stress fracture, we set some goals and some were short term of getting off of crutches, walking normally again, getting back to walk running, getting strong. And then we had some further out goals around Kona and 70.3 worlds. And I remember writing down these goals and I had a plan B goal, which was to try and make the start line of the 70.3 worlds. I had a plan A goal, which was to just make the start line for the Kona World Championships. And then we set a plan A plus goal, which was to do both Kona and the 70.3 Worlds. And I remember when I wrote that down, I was like, that is just impossible. It's like pie in the sky. I'm dreaming, it's almost nonsense. The specialists were like, look, I just don't think that's possible. And I just wanted to dare to dream to do both. And actually being on that start line in St. George, after coming second in Kona, which was a dream come true after the year that I'd had, it just felt amazing to be doing plan A plus, you know, and it didn't really matter about the outcome of the race. And to be honest, I felt quite fresh for this point in the year because it was only my fourth race in the year. So actually looking back on this year, I lost six months of the year due to my injury. I got four races in, I finished first, third, second and fourth. Actually, that's a great season. And it was combined into just three months that I did those four races. So actually for a year that could have been a complete write-off i am just so proud of what i achieved but also the team of people allowed me to achieve by just investing 100 percent into my dream of getting back being healthy being on the start lines and i can't thank those people enough and i really hope that we can just build on this and have an even better year next year <laughs> okay, I'll just set the standard, I guess. So if you're trying to hit it super far, do we go with like a big one? A big driver. Big shots. Big shots. It sounds like something what it sounds like. I'm not gonna hear very far. Make sure you have that. If you do that like cringy romantic. <laughs> My shoulders are so wide, you can't get there.
and it doesn't surprise me that it went over that way. Lemonade with cream, who knew? Further than everyone. Are you sure you've never hit a ball before? Never. Yeah, never hit a ball in my life. for Monday when I get home. <laughs> what else goes in a bolognese? Mushrooms. Okay, as part of this video, we are going to do a bit of a giveaway, which is going to be a signed towel from the 70.3 World Championships. So in order to win this towel, all you need to do is comment below where you would love to see me race next year, and we will select one winner to win the towel. And we will never ask for money because some people have been hacking and scamming, so we never ask for money on competitions. As you may have noticed, we have a new addition to Team Charles Barclay and the family. So stay tuned for a video coming very soon about introducing Little Pickle. As always, make sure to like and subscribe for future videos. Lucy, you put that